According to many Muslim apologists, the Quran contains scientific truths revealed centuries before human beings made the discoveries. Long before Kepler, the Quran mentioned the orbits of the planets, and long before Edwin Hubble, the Quran explained that the universe is expanding, or so the claims are made. Are there truly scientific wonders in the Quran, or are they scientific blunders? Surah 2133 reads, It is he who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon. They swim along, each in an orbit. To Islamic evangelists, this verse is evidence of the Quran's divine origin, but notice what celestial bodies to which it ascribes orbits. The sun and the moon. We now know that the sun is at the center of our solar system, and it is the earth that orbits the sun, but apparently the author of the Quran did not know this. The sun actually does have a very small orbit because of the gravity of the planets, but this is not what the Quran could mean. As further indication, other passages do refer to the Earth as being fixed in space, and in every instance where orbits are mentioned, the Sun and the Moon, never the Earth, are specified. This points to the common geocentric model of Muhammad's time, disproven by Copernicus and Galileo centuries ago. Another passage in the Quran reads, He has created the heavens and the Earth for truth. He wraps up the night and the day, and wraps the day up in the night. Many Muslims believe this describes a spherical shape of the earth, but how does a reference to wrapping represent a sphere? The verse says nothing about earth being wrapped anyway. It says the night is wrapped in the day and the day in the night. There is nothing here to indicate a spherical earth. In Surah 5147 we read, It is we who have constructed the heaven with might, and verily it is we who are steadily expanding it. Is this a description of the universe's expansion? Other translations word this verse differently. We have built the heaven with our hands, and we have the power to extend its vastness. Or, we have built the heaven with might, and we it is who make the vast extent. These translations seem to point out the great size of the universe, not specifically that it is expanding. Additionally, if the verse is to be taken literally and dissected for scientific accuracy, then Muslims ought to also consider the two verses that follow it. In verse 48, we are told that the earth is laid out flat, and verse 49 claims that all things are created in pairs. Obviously, the earth is not flat, and there are many types of bacteria and plants that reproduce asexually and have no male and female counterparts. The scientific inaccuracies don't end there, either. According to Surah 1886, the sun sets in a spring of murky water, or swamp. Muslims may attempt to dismiss such a verse as metaphor, but who's to say the scientific miracle verses they lay claim to aren't also metaphor? Without a clear explanation of how to identify one as metaphor and the other as literal, only a double standard is at work. Surah 7116 tells us that the moon is a light and the sun a lamp. While people of the 7th century believed the moon to be a light source, modern science has known for some time that the moon reflects light from the sun and is not a light itself. We have made the heavens as the canopy, Surah 2132 states. The idea of a flat expanse above the earth is another common belief of the ancient world, known as the firmament in Hebrew scriptures, Sumerian scriptures, and other sources. Again, it is part of a primitive geocentric model with a flat earth surrounded by several levels of heavens or sky. Elsewhere in the Quran are references to seven heavens, and the spreading out of the earth as a flat expanse. If there were scientific wonders in the Quran, why haven't Muslims been using it to make predictions? There has been no instance of a Muslim calling out any passage as a scientific truth until long after the discoveries were already made. What would truly be miraculous would be the discovery of a cure for cancer or a renewable energy source from the pages of Islam's text. But nothing of the sort has turned up. It seems likely indeed that Muslims who perceive scientific miracles in their holy book are simply projecting their own wishful thinking and modern knowledge onto the Quran. The claims of scientific miracles in the Quran are built on poor understandings of modern science, vague passages open to a variety of interpretations, and an ignorance of all the verses that fail the test of scientific accuracy. For those of us who accept the Quran in its historical context, as a product of 7th century men, this is not the least bit surprising. But facing these facts is not really even that consequential to a Muslim, I would argue. One need not believe there is advanced information buried in a holy book to believe and follow the theological claims of the text. The only thing that suffers from losing these scientific wonders is a literalist fundamentalism that just so happens to not be that literalist 
with its dismissal of the indisputably unscientific surahs. In terms of scientific knowledge, the Quran is just what we'd expect from a tribe of 7th century desert dwellers. There are no scientific wonders, but there are plenty of scientific errors.